did your penis go in her mouth? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up. And here's the deal, too. I, it, we can fall on the sword okay. and say I screwed up or something. But if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says he did it, then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't we don't want a huge problem. We don't want a huge problem for you. Right. It's this is time. It's time. If you're if it touched her mouth, if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second, two seconds, three seconds, you gotta tell us now. Look, there's there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in between uh, being forced mm -hmm. and some and, old girl who and, wants it. Right. Okay. We've had plenty of that. We, right. we, we get that. We know that. Okay. But there is, there is, there is a big difference. Okay. Right. The man you see here is Daniel Holtzclaw, a 27 year old police officer. He was called in for questioning by the Oklahoma City Police Department, where he worked as well. On June 18th, 2014, he stopped the car of Janie Liggins, 57, for suspicion of driving under the influence and forced her to perform an intimate act on himself in the back of his patrol car in Oklahoma City. She reported the matter to the police, and through the details in her account, Daniel was identified as a prime suspect. After this investigation, his name became synonymous with one of the most high-profile cases of police misconduct and assault in recent times. It highlighted critical issues like law enforcement abuse and racial bias. Daniel was accused of misusing his powers to assault women of African-American descent. Let's see how his interrogation led the detectives to present him in court for his crimes. I was going to say there's a chair. Yeah. I was going to say there's a chair. No, right there. that I had uh, back surgery okay. a year ago. Rocky's coming. The okay. here go. And I had a back fusion. Oh, this is about the only chair I can sit in. I don't Does know what. Your back it does. Well, no, it gives. It's. Um, it's very giving. I'm turning this off because I don't want this back in this. And not to be yucky, but it's low back where my back fusion is. And I can put my butt right there mm -hmm. so my tailbone's not getting extra pressure on it. I don't know. It, it, I can't sit in one of those. It'll kill me. Okay. Rocky's coming. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do this while and he may walk in here in a minute and okay. get this done. Um, now, I know you're an officer, and I know you've seen these a thousand times right. and you've read them yourself. Right. You still ask me any questions if you have one. Right. Okay. Don't be embarrassed of that. Right. Okay. I think I'm already embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? <laughs> why, tell me why you're embarrassed. The station deal, so. Nobody. Well, I mean, there's I mean, rumors everyone, flying. Everyone. I know. <laughs> and we tried to do that as kind of quietly as we could. And that's why we took you up the front and stuff. But this is going to make the rumors go away. Okay. Okay? For you. Right. The rumor tomorrow is going to be on somebody else. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's get them off of you mm -hmm. and get them on to somebody else and get this over with. Okay. Okay? All right. Yeah, the right to remain silent. Right after entering the room, Detective Davis boldly attempts to build rapport. The detectives understand that Daniel himself is a police officer and he's familiar with the techniques they'll be using, so pressuring him into giving information may not be the best approach. So they start off with a friendly and cheerful attitude, and instead of speaking to him like a suspect, they give him the respect of a colleague to make him drop his guard. They further reassure him by saying this interrogation is being done so the rumors go away and Daniel can clear his name. Having these rights of mind, do you wish to talk to me and us at this time without an attorney? Yes. Present? Okay. Right. Yes. Right there. Read this out loud. <clears throat> I've read the statement of my rights and understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer your questions at this time. I do not want an attorney present at this time. I understand and know that what I'm doing, no promises or threats may have been made to me and no pressure or force of any kind has been used against me. Agree? Agree. Sign, print. That's too funny. I haven't met anybody else that writes left-handed. <laughs> it kind of creates a problem when you're on a traffic stop, doesn't it? Because you're writing and holding book. your ticket book in this hand and your and gun hand doesn't bother you. Well, that's because you're huge. <laughs> 
What's your commission number? 1782. I masturbate right and left. Okay. <laughs> does, that, does that work? <laughs> the informal nature of the language used throughout the interrogation may seem odd to many people, but Detectives Davis and Rocky are experienced interrogators from the Special Victims Unit of the Sexual Crimes Unit. They have been desensitized to such language and tend to use it more in interrogations to allow the perpetrator to open up fully without any mental or verbal barriers. For the same reason, they also share some very personal details and break the ice in the room, which they hope will instantly result in the cooperation they get from Daniel. You had said, and we told you that there was a traffic stop, right. that somebody made some allegations against an officer. Right. They don't know the officer's name, none of that. But, and you said that you made a traffic stop after work, yeah. but you didn't call it in. I didn't call it in. Where was that? It was about Northeast 50th and Lincoln just to the west. Okay. Tell me about that stop. I was going westbound on Northeast 50th, probably a block just east of uh, Lincoln. I see a red Grand Prix, or Grand Dam, in my right lane, and the outside lane, I'm in the inside lane. The car swerves. And so at the time I'm thinking, okay, it's a, probably a drunk person or maybe he got excited because they saw a cop. So I kind of f fall behind it, kind of drifting just a little bit, not crossing lane lines, nothing crazy. So I light it up because it, at first the traffic violation I saw at first when it swerved, um, that was just west of uh, Northeast 50th and Lincoln. And then made contact, it was a black female, um, asked for license and insurance. Um, stated that she didn't have insurance, gave me an ID. At the time, I'm like, do you have a valid insurance or a valid license? She said, no, I told her, I just got off work. I mean, <laughs> what's the deal? You know, why, why are you swerving? And she says, um, I'm just trying to go home to Ann Arbor-ish on the Northwest side to see your daughter or something like that. Um, so I asked, is there anything on board as far as the vehicle? Is it okay if I search your vehicle and whatnot? She said, the only thing that's inside there is a Kool-Aid cup. I'm like, is there anything inside of that Kool-Aid? Is there liquor or anything inside that Kool-Aid? She's no. I'm like, okay, is there anything else inside there? She says there's pills. I'm like, is that the only thing? And then, so I said, can you have permission to search your car? She says, yes, I go inside the car, I see a lot of pills. But, um, what kind of pills? I didn't really. Like scattered pills or in a bottle? She said pills? it was high coding pills, but I just quickly glanced, looked at it, and I think I saw her name on the prescription bottle, so I didn't... Oh, so it was a bottle? Right. Uh, okay. There were several bottles in her purse. And then, so at that time, I just returned back to her. It's like, um, okay, I saw your pills. I didn't see any alcohol. I sniffed the drink, didn't smell any alcohol, and the Kool-Aid. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just off work. I'm tired. Um, get your license taken care of. Just mine. So she didn't have a driver's license? She didn't have a driver's license, and I was just like, go to DPS, uh, Department of Public Safety on King, get that taken care of, and cut her loose after that. Okay. Then where'd you go? That went straight home. Okay. Um, do you remember her name? It was on the I don't, description. I don't. Okay. okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I solar swerve and whatnot so i i mean me i don't felt <laughs> i know i mean people I know, co cops say that right. is have a you know whatnot <laughs> right. to have the vision whatever but i felt like i needed to make that traffic stop. okay how was she was she respectful was she she not? felt like was she, she was nervous and whatnot and i'm like why are you nervous and she was even crying i'm like why are you crying why are you nervous whatnot and she's just like, I don't know, I'm just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. I'm like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work, I'm tired. So with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, I said I'd go get that taken care of tomorrow. Her her way. And you don't have to, I'm not going to sit here and go, why didn't you right. take her to die? I well, that's, that's the reason why. No, I don't care. Um, was she wrong? Did you think she was drunk? I think she was, I think she was, she drank, but I don't think she, with my experience, I don't think she was past the legal limit. Right, right. So, so I mean. And that's what I asked her too, is like, with your pain medicines, how? Everyone knows that you drink with that, it maximizes the effects. So, 
I asked her that, she said no. But I, when she was in the back of my car, when I was in the front car, in the driver's seat, I could smell it off of her, but I don't think she was still past the legal limit. Okay. This interrogation clip will be unlike any others you may have seen so far. When watching such interrogations, you too may have moments where you realize that the suspect has now slipped up. The way to get a confession is often by having the suspect make mistakes when going over minute details that may seem unnecessary to the suspect, but add up to the story. But Daniel knows how that works, so he's giving extremely specific descriptions of the event, including the route, sequence of events, and some parts of the conversation. But he still tries to keep it casual by adding words like whatnot. By using such words, he's being vague so he can fill in the details later. If he adds these words, it sounds more impromptu and not like he has already practiced giving a statement. Okay, so you got her out of the car? Yes. Okay. Um, and put her in the back of your car? Yes. Okay. Um, any problems there? No, she was cooperative. Didn't give me any problems or whatnot. Okay. And then you searched, did you run her through Unit 800? I didn't. You didn't? Mm -hmm. So, did you run her on your MDT? No, I didn't. All my, all my stuff as far as that, because I didn't even call it in and say it was a traffic stop, my computer was off and everything as well. Did you shut it off after I just shut it off, work? yeah, on the way, on 50th, I turned it off right before the traffic stop, basically. Okay. And where did you pick her up, 50th and what about? 50th and Lincoln, just to the west. But now where'd you see her swerve, kind of? I'd say a block just to the east of uh, Lincoln and 50th. Okay. Did she pull over right away? She was in the right lane and the outside lane when I saw her swerve. And so she saw a police car right there, and so she kind of did what everyone does, slow down, kind of, okay, is he going to pull me over or not? And then I lit her up about 50th and Lincoln, past the intersection to the west. Okay. When you um, when you put her in your car, did you pat search her? Uh, when I came here, I was like, lift up your shirt. Is there anything on you, anything as far as your waistband or anything like that? She said no. And then I put her in the vehicle and went from there. Did, her did your hands go on her at all? I backhanded, I backhanded her on as far as the side. Where on her body? Tell me. You uh, backhanded her waist, her waist, and the back portion. I didn't touch her or anything, but the back portion and the waist. And then she lifted it up like right here. And there's nothing. Did she lift it up like this? No. Okay. So she never, like, went, whoo, nothing no. exposed her breasts or anything like that. She asked me if I was like, no, it's okay. She asked you if it, you want to search me. I'm like, no, it's okay. Uh, so she never like put her hands on the car and you. Ch -ch 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 -ch. No, no. Okay. Okay. Um, when you where was she positioned or standing when you back when you did your the it back was of your about hand on her? Probably the right front right fender of the of my patrol vehicle. But did you, was she facing you or was she turned? No, she was facing away from me. And you just kind of did it like yeah, this. Yeah, back there. Yes. Okay. Did your hand go on? Her no, that? that's not what I was saying. It was, it was the hip, the side, not the butt section. What about right here? No. You didn't? No, I didn't. They can tuck a gun and That's right why I asked to lift it up. Oh, so she just kind of showed yeah. you her belly? Right. Okay. Then you talked to her for a little bit. Right. In the, well, you, after you searched her, you right. put her in the back of the car. Right. Then we used to always kind of keep the door open and talk when they're not like combative or anything. Did right. you talk to her and get information then while she was in the back of your car? Right, I talked to her for a little bit just as far as what's inside the vehicle, can I consent to search your vehicle? Um, is there anything in that Kool-Aid? She said no. Um, just talking to her, what's the deal? Why are you driving late at two o'clock at night, you know? Why did you swerve? Um, so she's going to Ann Arbor over on the northwest side to visit her daughter, I believe, so. Then you went up and searched her car? After she gave me consent to search the car. How long, you think? I did a quick search, to be honest with you. I didn't. I looked under the seat, boom, sniffed the, sniffed the juice, whatever she's had, and I didn't smell alcohol on it. Went through her purse, like she said, there's the pills in it, looked at real quick to see if their name was there. And that was basically it. And when I went back to her, I was like, okay, I didn't smell any alcohol on your, your car and your juice thing. And I'm like, what's the deal? Are you really drunk or not? And she's like, no, I'm just trying to go back home. And at that time, I was like, okay, but I'll go ahead and follow you. I said, I'm not going to take you to jail. I'm tired. I'm not going to take you to jail. I'll go and follow you. And let's go back to 44 and you head westbound on 44. So that's what we did. Did you follow her? Actually, she, when I went behind her and we got in the car, she took forever and I started getting annoyed. So I just do you turned it and I went ahead and I saw her in the back view of my rear view mirror. 
So she was following a 44, but then I took off going northbound on Broadway extension while she took 44 to go west. So you were able to see her do that? Yes. And go, and then when you, did you lose her when you got on Broadway? When I went to northbound on Broadway and she went 44 west. Okay, okay. The biggest advantage Daniel has is being a police officer himself. Not only is he aware of the techniques that are used in interrogations, but he also knows exactly what details will prevent him from getting penalized, and he's extremely careful to use consent at his disposal. He makes sure that for every detail he shares, he has already obtained consent, and hence, he's an officer who only sticks to the protocols. If he was not already a suspect to a third person's eye, so far, he seems like the employee of the month. Well, she's... It, it sounds like this is the lady... I mean, this is the deal where she's the complaining party. Okay. Okay. And she's making some sexual allegations, obviously, because... Strums is working it. Right. What did she say? Well, was there anything, an accidental touch, a anything? If she thought it I, when I passed her, Drew, but I, there was nothing as far as I felt like I would do anything as far as sexual or anything like that. For my safety, I just checked to see the weapons or anything. And, and I, to make clear, I didn't that. didn't touch her butt by the waist side and whatnot. If you would like me to do it, for me to show you. <laughs> no, and I'm, fi I'm fine with it, and you have every right to do that. Right. She's saying that you made her lift up her shirt, and she, and when she lifted up her shirt, she exposed her breasts. No, no. Did you ever see I her asked her, is there, I asked her, is there anything inside your bra? And she said, no. So I was like, okay. And she said, you want me to show you? And that's all the time I said, no. No, you don't need to do that. She said that, she said, do you want, she said she was doing this. When you said, is there anything inside your bra? And she was going, no, I don't have anything like that. Did she do that? Yeah, she did, but I didn't look or anything like like that. Right. And then she was like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. She said when she said, do you want me to show you? You said, yeah, and she went, woo -hoo. No, I didn't. But could she have been, woo -hoo, flashing you? And right. now you don't want to tell me because you're afraid you're no, in trouble? No, when I told her no, I said no. Then she didn't go, yeah, no. you know, because sometimes drunk girls are... Having a good time. Yeah, right. and, and no. partying down, and let's face and it. I've already heard stories about officers people want, and whatnot. They and want so officers want, for hubbies want, so or whatever. No. And, or, I said no. But you could have said no. But I'm asking you if she flashed you anyways. I didn't see her. I didn't see, see her. No I didn't see her. Okay. What about pants? Nothing in her pants as far as that concerned. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pulling down? I didn't see her pulling down pants. Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out were her pants fastened were they yeah everything they were still, up and everything was still intact so you never everything. saw her pull her pants down no i didn't why do you think she's making this up i don't know did you write her a ticket i didn't i let her go and i said i said i won't even arrest you for your no sdl trying to figure out why she'd say that i mean i could see her saying it if you wrote her a ticket because she's pissed off right Detective Davis asked the most crucial question in the case. If Liggins was, in fact, lying, then what would be the motive behind it? It would make sense to press charges if she had been given a ticket. She could have accused the officer in charge to get out of paying the fine. But in this case, Daniel did not even give her a ticket. This is one of the main arguments used by the victim. She did not have any motive to falsely accuse Officer Daniel Holtzclaw. Okay, she also have a sane exam, which you know what that consists of. Right. There's a reason why we wanted your buckles. Okay. Okay. Now, I mean, we can go through a couple different things mm -hmm. of why we've got you in here, but you sure there's nothing you want to? Nothing. So if we go off the video and watch that, right. you're still going to stick with your story. Yes, sir. If we go off DNA? DNA as well. Should we show you the video? If yes. You, you do want to see it? Do I? Yes. Everything that I recall of that night is what I what was I asked and everything. That's what happened. If I, have I maybe not asked enough questions? I think everything covered as far as that. The way Daniel presents himself throughout the investigation is quite interesting. If you see it from the surface, you may miss out on all the cues. But that is his exact plan. 
Daniel knows the exact cues that detectives look for in a suspect while interrogating them, and he has eliminated them all. You'll notice that he is sitting in a very calm manner while resting his arms in a triangular position. A suspect would usually give out cues like scratching, biting his fingernails, etc. Reading such cues allows interrogators to see the weak spots and pressure points in a suspect, but since Daniel has managed to conceal them, he has left the interrogators little to work with. The fact that he lacks cues and body language combined with his unnerving confidence in cooperating to do all kinds of forensic tests, including giving a sample to the sexual assault nurse examiner, has given him the upper hand. If the detectives did not have all the evidence they needed already, he might have gotten away with it. His agreeing to the fact that nothing will be found on surveillance is another example of how well he has planned it. The area in which he assaulted Liggins is when he regularly patrols, and he is aware of all the CCTV cameras there. He knows that even if something is caught, it will not help the detectives in charging him. Do you recall putting your penis in her mouth? I don't. Would you recall that if you did it? If I did it, yeah. Okay. Well, I think you really, in all honesty, you need to really double think about this. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't look really good. Okay. Okay. I mean, in what you originally thought, detectives just don't roll up in there for no reason. Right. Okay. And we just didn't pick you out. out. Okay. Right. I mean, there's a whole lineup there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's definitely enough here to bring you in here to start questioning you. Right. Okay. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why she was trying to give you every out on the whole movie thing. Right. Okay. Now, is there any reason, any reason at all, even from whatever angle, because, you know, it takes a little bit to clear up those videos. Right. But any reason why you're would be out. No. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Now, in doing this, you know how saying exams work and I ain't got to explain about DNA or anything like that. Right. Now, I didn't say you had sex with her. Right. Okay. But getting a blood job, okay, that is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. <laughs> I know, I'm... but I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Are we are we going to get something from the SANE exam? Go with the SANE exam. Do, and do you understand that you don't have to full-blown ejaculate to get something out of the SANE exam? Right. We can get skin cells. We can get pre ejaculate and do all that and still get DNA. Right. And or did your penis go in her mouth? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up. And here's the deal, too. I, it, we can fall on the sword okay. and say I screwed up or something. But if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says, he did it. Then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't, we don't want a huge problem. We don't want a huge problem for you. Right. It's, this is time. It's time. If you're, if it touched her mouth, if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second, two seconds, three seconds, you got to tell us now. Look, there's, there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in between a rape being forced mm -hmm. and some and, old girl who yeah. wants it. Right. Okay. We've had plenty of that. We, right. we, we get that. We know that. Okay. But there is, there is, there is a big difference, okay? Right. But I'm just saying, you know, these videos ain't helping, and I mean, we're going to do the comparing and all that. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's not looking good so far. Okay. Okay. Another cue that interrogators look for in their suspects is eye contact. A guilty person is bound to shy away from making eye contact. Someone who's telling the truth will almost always look you straight in the eye. We are so used to this that even our brain registers information as more truthful if we receive it while making eye contact. 
Daniel maintains eye contact with the lead detective as she questions him and only breaks away when he has to look at the other detective. Detective Rocky also points out that he has not been speaking a lot. This is another great example of the tactics used by Daniel. When the interrogation began, he started cooperating immediately and spoke a lot while sharing important details of the events. This gave the interrogators an illusion that Daniel would stay open and cooperate. But now that he has shared the things he planned on sharing, he has become rather quiet. Any answer he makes is limited to one-word responses and repeating his old answers. Okay, and I don't want to see anybody go down for something that right. there was no force. Right. Now, I'm not seeing any beating or anything like that. Right. Okay, I'm not seeing that big time, uh, big guy forcer type thing like what we do see. Right. But, you but know. if it was a get out of jail free card, that happens. Right. We know that happens. Right. You know, he made me, I didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. If it's a get out of jail free card, then that's a different story. And we've worked enough of them, okay, cases that it didn't happen. The problem is, is where we're at right now, mm -hmm. okay? And that's why we wanted to hear your version of the story. Right. Whether we just go off of what we see and, and I mean, whatever this tests out as. Right. Okay. But. So I'm, I'm sticking with my story. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> the interview technique being used with Daniel is called the read technique. This technique is used by the interrogators when they already believe in the culpability of the suspect. This helps in bringing out a confession. Detectives establish empathy by saying that they are on Daniel's side because they understand the struggles of a police officer, but they still actually believe a crime has been committed. They make several advances towards Daniel with statements saying that they know he's not violent and that Liggins may have made advances towards him, but Daniel promptly rejects them all and says that he will stick with his story. The point of saying that it could have been a get out of jail card for Liggins is that they are making the crime look more favorable for him. They're trying to establish that even if he confesses, it will not be a problem for him and they only need the truth. Okay, mm -hmm. you probably don't, not necessarily gonna remember the name, but her name is Terry Morris, okay, black female. Um, supposedly you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission. This ring a bell? No. You did a, a traffic stop with her. Uh, she thought you ran for warrants. Was it clicking? You drove her around. Mm -hmm. no. Name doesn't. I don't recall a name like that. Okay. She's claiming the same thing. The exact same thing. So far, Daniel only knew that he had been brought in to be questioned about Janny Liggins but now he is taken by surprise because the detectives have mentioned another name, Terry Morris, who was also an African-American woman aged 44 years. She too came forward with assault charges against Daniel with strikingly similar details of the crime. But Daniel is able to maintain his composure and denies even seeing her. The reason that detectives suddenly moved from Liggins to Morris is because they wanted to catch him off guard. For whatever reason, things are pointing at you again. Right. Now this was before even this incident this morning. Traffic stop, not logged in, all that stuff. This morning? No, no, this has been a little bit ago. Okay. This was here just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Anything? I don't, I do you don't, remember, do you remember stopping? I don't recall a name of okay. Terry Moore. Well, I wouldn't remember a right. name. How about black female downtown, city rescue mission, that's what I was trying to jog your memory. I haven't been to a city rescue mission. I didn't say you made it there. <laughs> Have I you promised anybody a ride to the city rescue mission? I haven't mission? asked anyone, anyone asked me to the city re uh, rescue mission. No, a, she didn't have to ask you. Did you offer to take anybody to the city rescue mission? No, I don't offer anyone because I don't like going there. To be honest with you, I don't. Don't like dealing with what? I don't like going over to the city rescue mission or anything like that. Okay. How about any stops of a person just walking, even just downtown? Anywhere downtown? No. You, you I don't, I don't, in spring like I don't go downtown. Besides if I go to class and I'm um, in that class in the Western of Maine, the Valeros. The or Phil the up. jail. Or jail. Or headquarters, right. property. Right. right. Yeah, and you just, you just don't remember doing any of those type of stops? No. Not in the last month or so? No. Do you run everybody that you come in contact with? Majority of the time. 
Daniel has answers in place for why he logged off early and why he made that traffic stop, but he was not expecting to be questioned about another victim. For this reason, he denies knowing anything about Terry Morris. This will allow him to fill in more strategic details later. Another very important observation at this point is that both detectives are playing distinct roles at the moment. The more empathetic and light-humored questions are coming from Detective Davis, who has taken on the role of the good cop, while Detective Rocky participates in confrontational questions, playing the role of the bad cop. But you didn't run, oh girl, this morning. The 50th. The 50th in Lincoln. No, I didn't. I didn't run her. We, the other girl that he's talking about is kind of making the same allegations, and that's that's weird. Yeah, that's it doesn't look good. I mean, I mean that, that's it doesn't weird. look yeah, that's it doesn't look good. So. No, I don't. No one with the city rescue mission. Never been asked, never been offered anyone to go there. Um, do you give people rides sometimes? I do give people rides. Do you? I do. Because sometimes I'd be like, I am not a taxi cab. I'll go but rides. Have you always been in this your new car? I mean, you ever had it down? Uh... Identification of the patrol vehicle is what led the detectives to Daniel. At the time of the crime, a handful of people had the all-black squad car, and Liggins identified the car as the vehicle of her perpetrator. Most of the officers at that time were driving the black and white Ford Crown Victoria, but Daniel was one of the handful who had the all-black car. This helped the detectives shortlist the possible suspects, and finally, with the help of the description, they closed in on Daniel. Are you circumcised? I am circumcised. Just asking. Do you have pubic hair? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, some people manscape, as you call it. Right. Do you groom? I groom, okay. yes. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> you got any identifying marks around your penis? Or? I don't. Just the plain old penis, huh? Just plain old. Plain old 14 incher. Nah, I don't <laughs> say about that, but. <laughs> See, you should have. You just had your opportunity. <laughs> I just don't know what to. What to think? Would you take a polygraph? Uh, yeah, if you want to take a polygraph. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a solution. Do you know how slow DNA is? I don't. I do not. Slow. Um, you'd be willing to take a polygraph on it? Yeah. Okay. Get that set up. You, uh, that's kind of delving off different, but you married? I'm not married. Girlfriends? Uh, here and there. Kids? No kids. You're big. You on roids? I'm not on steroids. A little bit. No, I've been always, which I don't care. I've always been a big. I'm not the dope police. I've always been a big bone guy. Football, athletic. You you got more than big bones. You got big muscles too. I work too. out all the time. Do you? I do. I Where do you work out? At a four star gym, off of May about 63rd. Yeah. No roids at all. No roids. You do all the protein drinks I drink and all a that lot stuff. Of protein. That can damage yeah. your kidneys, just so you know. <laughs> so. If you did roids, would you tell us? I wouldn't. I'll tell you. I mean, because we don't care. I have nothing to hide about that. I've always been a big guy. I always work out all the time and whatnot. When was the last shower you had? Uh, took a shower before work. When you went home, was anybody home? Um, my girlfriend was home. Did, did, did you get laid? Huh? No, she didn't. Okay. She just stayed. Did you get laid? Uh, Messed around, yeah. What's messed around? Uh, I guess. We were all adults. She, we almost had sex, and she was tired. What'd you do? So my penis went around her vagina, and, and then maybe went a little bit in, and then she pushed me off and said, no, we don't want to. I'm tired. I was like, okay. That's kind of mean to let it get that far and then stop. <laughs> so, so that's when you got home? That's when I got home. How often do you have sex? Uh, about once a day, if that. You guys have sex?
It's once a day? Yeah. How old are you? 27. Ah, uh, well, yeah. How much yeah. you f*** off? Uh, maybe once a day. So you have sex once a day and masturbate once a day? If I, yeah. What'd you do when you got shot down at home today? Uh, Usually you gotta relieve that. Right. <laughs> I know. That was that was before work. That happened before work. You masturbated before work? Yeah. Not did you just go roll over and go to sleep when she didn't give you yeah. any? Yeah. You ever been accused of anything like this before? I haven't. Not in Michigan? No. I have not. You weren't one of those football players. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I was not. Without a lot of context, these details don't seem very crucial, but this is very important information that Daniel is given. The part about his girlfriend will be brought up at the end of the interrogation, and this is also when we see Daniel being most nervous. Do remember this as you watch the rest of the video. Anything, anything you can think of that will help us help you. That's it. I want to step up. I want to go. Tess, I want you to put up my name. I want to because we, you know what, if this is a bunch of false allegations, then I want it cleared up too. Right. And I'll help you clear it up and, and, uh, it's, this, we don't talk. It's not swarming, it's swarming it's, around Spring it's, Lake. It's, it's out it's there. It's just in the department too. So and it's I mean. not swarming all over the department. We, in the scrums, we do not run around and go, guess what, this won't work, I'm gonna work. We don't do that. Right. It's not professional. I'm not going to lie to you. It's around Spring Lake. Right. And everybody's going to know that we pulled you down here. We right. tried to do it as discreetly as we could. Right. But, and like I said, there's officers that, I'm not saying being with the is right, but it happens. Right. And it's life. Right. And if, if that's what this was, lay it out there for me now. Right. No, it wasn't. No. Wasn't she? Would did she offer anything? Don't take me to jail. Don't I'll do this. I'll no, do this. Did she, she offer you anything? I think she was nervous, like I said earlier, and maybe a little flirtatious, but nothing crazy. She never offered anything no. in exchange for you not taking her. No, she's really worried about going to jail, but and, she, and you sometimes know, she was, they'll say, "Hey, I'll give you a hammer it. if no. I don't go to jail." <laughs> no, no. She didn't offer that. Mm -hmm. She was nervous, like I said. She cried earlier. Did she cry as soon as you stopped her or after she was in your car? When did she start crying? I think in the car, yeah. What made you let her go? Number one. To be, to be honest, yeah. I wanted to get home. Then why'd you pull her over? It, <laughs> like I said earlier, I just cop, swerve, DUI. And if Holy I had, crap, if I had, if I, had if I know if I had to do it, I would have done it, but I didn't think that she was past the legal limit. That's just, I mean, I just would avoid that if I, did you at any time, you said you picked her up around 50th and Lincoln. I mean, when you just, saw her swerve, right. did you at any time, were you always behind her or did you pull up beside her to maybe see who was in the car and then no, pull back she, behind her? She was at 50th and Lincoln, swerve, and I was behind her, so I felt behind her. And you, were you away. ever beside her? No. What what lane was she in? The Niles Highway. Close to the curb? Yeah. And Did you ever pull up beside her on this way and then fall behind her? No. I was, because sometimes, I was directly behind her about here and she swerved. And you stayed behind her? And because sometimes her. I would pull up beside to see, okay, how many people am I dealing with? Nah, in the car. I didn't do that time. I've done that before, but right, you didn't do that. I didn't do it this time. No. Could you tell if she was the only passenger? I or? couldn't. It was dark tinted windows. I couldn't tell. It was so you didn't know vehicle. how many people you were walking up on. No, I didn't. Did she roll down her window as soon as you? She had the back left window rolled down, and then uh, the how she didn't never rolled it up, and I think she opened the door, if I recall. Okay. And was it pretty quick that you took her to the back, to your car? After a couple questions, license, you know, insurance, typical thing. She just gave me her little uh, Oklahoma identification card. And that's why I go, okay, investigate attention, come back to the car with me. Okay. Yeah, because that gives you a reason to search if you need it. I mean. 
Detective Davis continues to take a very empathetic stance, saying things like cop to cop so that Daniel does not feel like he's being investigated too seriously, and that they also want to maintain his reputation. But this is a ruse to make him share more details. They hope to achieve this by, one, getting him to speak more, and two, tiring him out with repetitive questions. They believe if they continue with this, then he will share some details that he has managed to conceal so far. Did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some pubic hairs right in here. <laughs> Could they be yours? No, that's not, I didn't pull my out and didn't do anything right there. Did she? No. But do you think they could be? No, it's not. No. Nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be? No. Right there? No. Has your penis ever been out? Do by your car? While I'm working? No. Not working? No. Have you ever had sex in the back seat of your car? I have not. Because, I mean, some people do. You know, I mean, I'm not saying forced sex, consensual sex. Right. So your penis has never been in your back seat? Mm -hmm. Is it possible any of this DNA shares? No. It's not. That's, I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes going to be yours? No. No. Are you worried about it? I'm, this whole situation I'm worried about. I mean, <laughs> I've never been here, never been questioned, um, especially in the, you know, like a room like this, you know, obviously I, I'm yeah. worried about the whole circumstances of Earlier, you, you got to understand, we kind of see different things, okay? You seem a little extra worried whenever you talked about seeing her, we talked about seeing her boobies. Mm -hmm. You sure she just didn't flash you? I can't, she did not fly. I, I don't want to say I can't recall, but I'm pretty positive she didn't fly. Well, I see a pair of titties. She, go, she went like this, but nothing as far as I'm going like crazy looking. Lifting, lifting the shirt. Um, no. How far she, she lifted? Won, she lifted the first one. I patted her down. She was like right here to the stomach line. Did you see her belly? Maybe some fat rolls or something. I don't know, but nothing right, but, like I mean, I could just, you see skin? Yeah, I saw skin, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's older. We're it's hanging down, and you I, saw the bottom of her tits. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's dark. I don't know. You like older women? I don't. So far, Daniel was only being confronted by the allegations of his victims. It was his word against theirs. But that has not been very fruitful. So the detectives start to share the forensic evidence that he does not know about yet. Yet he still manages to maintain his composure and confidently asks them to test his DNA. Tell <laughs> uh, She's twenty-five. Okay. What's the oldest lady you've slept with? Uh, maybe 29. You ever slept with a black woman? I have. In high school, I have. Okay. Pref do you have a race that you prefer? I don't. I don't. You just like... I'm half Japanese, so I'm not really... I was going to ask you if you were Asian. Anything, so I'm not really discriminating. Who's Japanese? Your mom or your dad? My mom. Did you ever say, I promise I'll let you go? I did, I said, I promise I'll let you go. I'm not worried about no state driver's licenses or anything inside that car. Did you tell her you're gonna follow her home? I did. I did. But then when she took forever to turn around, I got annoyed and I was like, it's good, let's go. But I saw her in the rear view mirror and I saw her take 44 when I went northbound on Broadway. Where did she live? She said she was going sister's house in Ann Arbor. Were you really going to follow her? That's far. I was going to drift off and I might really follow her, but I'm just going to drift off and okay, she's good to go. So I didn't think at first she was drunk. She was over the, the legal limit. But I thought of alcohol was on board, but nothing where she's DUI. Any way those pubes are going to be yours? No, they're not. Please, don't. I, know, I, know, I know we're going to test it. It just takes any way your skin cells are going to be 
anywhere on her mouth. No. Skin cells from your fingers. No. Did you touch her body anywhere other than with the back of your hand, Pat searching her? Just Pat searched her and that was about it. Didn't touch her face or anything. You gotta no. understand, we've had so many people sat in that same chair right. that tell us all day long, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. They promise on their baby, on their mama. Right. They promise to God. And then they come right back. We get back these tests, and you can't get out of it. You right. know, I mean, once you kind of get basically kind of locked into something, there, there's no talking about it. Right. And that's why we would try to give a person every opportunity. Right. Because if you know, the tests come back, you ain't coming back in here. Because we're here. We have a woman that says about, you know, basically being sexually. Assaulted, right. Okay. And right. we're calling it by force and all that. Big difference between that and a hookup. Right. And to come back, if, if there's something there and you say no, and she said it was that, you know, you, you see where we're going. Right, I do. And that's why we always try to give every angle. Right. We wasn't there. Right. So we just got to go off of everything that we see and, and have. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you understand? No hookup? No hookup. Not even a little hookup? No, no, not a little hookup. No. No, I saw no breasts. Did she see your penis? No. I'm just trying to think of anything that she could have misconstrued. Or why. Why did she go to all this trouble? I don't know. Did you do anything that pissed her off? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think I did anything when I was talking to her. I don't know. Was it rude? She was cooperative. I wasn't at a point where I'd be like, okay, you're going to jail or something or whatnot. I don't think I made any like threats to make, you know, to get in the car, like I said, or anything like that. When we first walked into the office, first time you saw us, okay? Right. And we just kind of started talking. You brought up this traffic stop. Because the major came in, or the captain talking about 50th and Lincoln. And, okay. When when he came and got you, yeah, what did he say to you? I think it was the captain, and then we were in the major's office, and he said something accusations of 50th and Lincoln. That was, and I didn't hear any rumors going into the station or anything. I was just going to show up and line up like I don't really do. When you, when you came in, you said something about, wow, why are all them guys here? I don't think I. So I was shocked. I'm, you said I'm that like, in the car, not to, you were like, when I saw everybody, I was like, whoa, I wonder. Because I was. Did you think we were there for you? I was just, what I saw that and I knew from Academy, I was like, what, what's going on? Did you think it was for you? I didn't know. I didn't see it. I've never been in trouble like this before. Never got accused of anything like this or nothing. But it scared you. Yeah, I was scared. Okay. If I walked into the station and saw some sex crimes detected there, that wouldn't scare me. It wouldn't scare me if I was just in the briefing station. But since I went in the room and was told to go in the room, and I saw then, your sex okay. crimes, okay. that's what went on. But I, I saw you when you walked in the door. Did you see me in the captain's office? I saw you, but I saw the captain glance over like that. Did you get scared then? No. The captain, I, I'm good with Captain Clifton. Are you? And just say, hey, what's up all the time. So it wasn't a big deal to me like that. And when he told me. But to when you got called room, in the then yeah. and then you were like, whoa. Yeah, what's going on? What's your phone number? 580. Did you exchange phone numbers with this lady? I did not. Did she have a phone? I did not, no. talk about hooking up later? No, I did not. Is she somebody you'd hook up with? No. Initially, they ask questions about his sexual preference because they are trying to establish an MO for Daniel. MO, or modus operandi, is a set of preferences or ways of doing things in compulsive criminals. Detectives have already identified two victims of African American origin and will end up finding 21 of the same race in total. This makes them believe that there is a pattern. But as the questions progress, they believe this is most likely not a matter of preference. Rather, it seems to be a calculated choice because of the negligence of the investigation of crimes against the community. However, this remains speculation at the moment. Why would she make... Because when, when, a, when a woman says something, 
something like this and they go through a same exam and they get you didn't give her a ticket so she's not getting out of a ticket you didn't arrest her because we get those when they go to jail i've been raped and have to work those stupid things because right. they think they're going to get out of jail right why in the world would she make this up i don't know i was she was cooperative she was nervous like i said earlier crying i told her not i'm not worried about no state driver's license i wasn't making she said uh, she was crying yeah and i i don't you know at times as an officer you might make a threat to be like oh i'm gonna take you to jail um but let's try to get some way to get in the car or something you know if I get right. or something but um that wasn't a case i wasn't threatening her i wasn't did she ever ask you if you were going to shoot her she did she was talking about a pistol all the time and talking about guns and whatnot and i'm like calm down i'm like i'm not gonna shoot you or anything like that did she think you were gonna shoot her maybe i'm like what and i even asked her i think i asked her what's the deal with you and cops do you have a bad run in with a cop the detectives have been very persistent in asking repetitive questions and it has finally paid off daniel mentions that liggins was worried that he was going to shoot her and she even asked the same to daniel However, he had not mentioned this before. This is a very significant detail that would not usually be forgotten. Now, the detectives become hopeful as they are starting to get more significant details. I'm just trying to think of every conceivable possible thing for this. Run down through on your search of her breasts again exactly how that went because even that and her pants was she standing or sitting when, during that time patted when i got to the vehicle about right here um said can i search you Back more by the front door the front right fender and then i patted her down by my bow lift up your shirt right here boom no weapons so Trust you me. said lift up her shirt your yeah. shirt yeah. what if that would she would have gone then I would have been, I would have told a supervisor or something. I'd be like, to get that off my back, you know. And it's not what I meant. Like you, you searched her with her. Where was her? Was she facing you or facing away? Facing away. She's facing away. Right. And how are you seeing if anything's falling? If she's facing away. If it fall, I'd see you right there. You'd see right there, but don't you usually have them turn face towards you and do uh, a shakeout? Officer safety always have everyone face away from me. You can't see what you can't hit. But you don't know if the weapon's there or anything? I'm, as far as I quick pad search, lift up your shirt, no weapons on board. You made a mention earlier about her pants. Uh, she did what with her pants? As far as that, it was in the, in the back seat. Nothing. She had tight pants and that's about it. But how did, did you have her do it? Like a cursory movement around her? Her belt line, anything like that, or any shake? No. Did you tell her how to, how far to raise her shirt or to do the, the shake with the bra, anything like that? I think she did the shake with her bra by herself. I didn't say to do any of that. As far as the did she pull it out, up, go like that, that. Yes, but as far as that's on her. As far as right here is when I told her to lift up the waistband. But she was faced away from you the entire time that her, her chest was, right. she was checking. Right, right. So when she lifted up her shirt, her back was to you? Uh, I think she was facing me, I asked, obviously, because I'm gonna look at the front end. You said you might've saw her, her belly, like a fat roll. Right. So you would've been to the side or to the front? If the time when she faced me is probably when I would've saw a fat roll or skin. But it wasn't for the, the check. No. No. Did she try to pull her pants down? No, no, I recall. Um, moved around the seat and that's about it. Nothing else. But when me. she was standing, did she try to pull her pants down? No. no. Did she do? You said she kind of did she like did this. this. Did she ever do anything down here? No. Because at that time, if she asked me, do you want, you want me to show you? I was like, no, no, I'm good. She did ask if? Yeah. What'd she say? I said, no, I'm good. When was that? Where was everybody then? I think that was in the car. Okay, I don't think you said that last time. I think I did. Yeah. You, maybe you did, I, and <laughs> maybe I just missed it. So she was in the car and said, do you want me to show when you? When she did the, the shake thing, 
And she's like, you want me to show you? I was like, no. Show you what? Just as, I guess she's trying to mean as far as just to boom or something if anything's in her bra or anything like that. But that was after you already had her lift up her shirt right, a little bit. because that was at the front right fender. Okay, okay. And like I said, I'm, I may have missed that or got confused with we've talked about a lot. So she asked you when she's sitting in your car, do you want me to show you? Right. And you said so no. no. Did she attempt it? No. And that was after the... After she was kind of doing like this? Yeah. Detective Davis has one success after the other in getting details from Daniel. Though he managed to keep a calm posture, his slip-up indicates that he is also on edge now. Daniel has now shared that Ligon's offered to show him her breasts. This is a question that the interrogators had asked outright earlier in the interrogation, and Daniel had denied the same. So this cannot be a piece of information that was forgotten. The detectives seem to be making progress. A thing that kind of concerns me is everything you're telling me is dead on to what she says. Everything. Except the sexual stuff. Nothing was done as far as that. Nothing. She smelled anything else besides alcohol? Just a little bit, like I said, when I was in this car seat. But I asked her if anything else was on board. She just said pills. Did she smell low, like not, weed? Not or? PCP or anything with the stink that I would smell. Right. I didn't smell any weed inside the car. I didn't smell any weed on her person. Um, that's about it. Finally, as the detectives are getting closer to cracking the facade created by Daniel, they begin confronting him with the details of the victim's story. But this will be tough because he has thought about his statement in detail. The detectives are also puzzled how every detail of both Daniel and Ligon's statements match except for the part about the assault. He was also careful not to add additional details like marijuana or alcohol usage. This is a mistake that criminals often make. They claim the victims have a distorted view of events because of alcohol or drug abuse, so the victim can seem less credible. But if it is untrue, then it plays against them and makes them look guiltier in court. Daniel is smart not to mention such things to further his innocence. Do you have an extra job? Is there a time when you can't take a lie detector test? No. That you can take it at any time? I can take it at any okay. time. You're not scheduled for vacation coming I'm up? I'm not or? scheduled for vacation. Okay. What, where are you at on your days on right now? Uh, this will be my second day out. Okay. When's that? So you're Tuesday to Tuesday? Tuesday to Tuesday. You take any testosterone booster? I do take a pro hormone, which is over the counter, uh, BYN, Beyond your Nutrition. Even when asked to take a polygraph test, Daniel maintains his confidence on the surface. Even unwillingness to take the test can reflect badly on him, and he knows it. Polygraph tests themselves are not admissible evidence in court, but they are useful in other ways. It can detect many physiological arousal factors like heart rate, respiration rate, perspiration, and skin conductivity. This in turn helps the detectives to navigate the flow of interrogation. They are able to decipher the pressure points of the suspect, which leads them closer to a confession. They say it was downtown, she was walking. Okay, so mm -hmm. when I say a stop, that's, you know, you see her right. like a voluntary contact. Right. Okay, here, think of a cross between this is one picture and this is her. She look familiar? No. No? Mm -mm. Now, you stopped her for sure and ran here uh -huh. on a different day. It was May 8th. Okay. Uh -huh. You sure she doesn't look familiar at all? Now, when you stopped her, you know, over at the Liberty apartment area, mm -hmm. okay, that's where you stopped her on May 8th. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, does that ring a bell at all? No, it doesn't. Okay. All right. Now, you ran her then. Okay. Now, she says that uh, you stopped her later on, like I say, later on in the month. And there's more kind of a downtown area. Does that ring a bell at all? I don't recall any of those pictures. I don't recall any of that. Okay. I don't ever go downtown besides if I go to the gas station or 
county or off duty jobs where, where you work off I don't duty I don't have an off duty I'll have a courtesy officer at my apartment okay so besides the Bur uh, Bolero and Andy maybe county. Viper here and there maybe okay that's what they are where you on duty but you're running Viper out of Spring Lake out of Spring Lake okay all right um you ever with your car you ever go visit anybody any buddies anything like that or no shopping anything no okay now that Daniel has slipped up and given them a lot of information, the detectives have the confidence to move one step forward. Daniel believes that they have moved on from Terry Morris, but they bring her up again. This is an especially sensitive topic for him because he has not prepared his story about her as he has about Liggins. So he denies having any interaction with her. However, the most important observation to make here is his body language. He has managed to look composed until now, but that seems to be changing. He is now seen sweating, Moreover, he had kept his hands in a triangular position to ensure he was not making any nervous gestures. But after the topic of Terry Morris begins again, he covers one hand with the other. This will allow him to cover shivering, scratching, and other signs of anxiety. Why, why would, uh, and granted you're not even recalling her on the May 8th, okay? Right. Um, but that's, I just wanted you to have a frame of mind of who's, who's making this. Um, these statements against you. Okay. And it's the exact same thing, too, you know. Um, you stop her, have her sit in the back seat, run for warmth, then you have her get her out, mm -hmm. okay? Unzip the pants. I mean, on and on and on. Well, we can go through. I mean, it's... It's to a T. It's of, exactly of this the same. Yeah, I don't recall any of those people. I don't think I recognize those people. What well, if you this is the recall? same one. This is the same one. I'm just showing you a picture. How, of how she's changed. Yeah, this has changed. Okay. That's the same girl. It's two different time periods, but she looks kind of in between. It's the same girl. Okay. Okay. Still nothing, even vaguely. She's always on the northeast side, you know, mm -hmm. 23rd and, and Kelly, 36. Kelly. Uh -huh. All right. But she's, I mean, she described you to a T. Okay. Okay. And like I said, I mean, it's everything, everything, you know, you don't remember her even, even forget what she's saying. You don't remember her having, offering a, a I, ride to the, to the shelter? I run in contact with a lot of people, and especially at Liberty Station, that's where I patrol. That's my area. Okay. Well, it's Charlie 3, but my sector, I go there all the time. Where is that? Twenty six in Lindsay area. So I I don't bring anyone to the shelter. I don't if I was asked I'll be like find another way. I don't I haven't yeah, brought you, anyone to the shelter. It's a good way to get somebody in the car. Yeah. Do you remember having a contact with a female like that age, okay? Uh, that you know, said she was going from a shelter from a rehab center. Um even saying, you know, you take her, I know. driving her around, anything like that. I know. Okay. Detectives also noticed he is getting nervous, so they continue to press him with the allegations made by Terry Morris. He starts showing more body movements, like rubbing his thighs, which he could be doing either because he's sweating or his hands are shaking. This is a clear sign of nervousness. This is going back to this other deal. You're saying about 15 minute traffic stop. How long do you usually take on traffic stop? Just on average? Maybe 20 minutes. No, that's, that's a it. long time. Maybe. Now, Maybe. 20 minutes, and I'll give it to you. Just even doing the gang stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 minutes. Now, that's going to be some 800 time, right? 800. Okay. Searching the car in detail, all of that. Okay, so doing all of that, all the mm -hmm. running, waiting in line, and even on a search. Now, the question I have is we got a lapse of time here, so I'm kind of get a better handle on where the time went. You're talking about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. no 800, no running on the computer, you shut it down. Mm -hmm. And you, even you said it was just a quick little search of the car. Where's the rest of that time? Just talking to her. About just, what? Just see I mean, where you're she's... going, uh, trying to, actually to try to get a confess, are you drunk or not? Like, are you been drinking? Because I could smell when I was in the yeah. car, but I can't really get it. Well, what if she said, yes, I'm drunk? I probably would have took her down. Did you do any I didn't tests? Do any, I didn't do any sobriety tests. Just from inside the car, smelling it, and that's about it. But Emotional, that, maybe. But even that, that, that'd be just within a 
a minute or two. I, mean, I used to be DRE, so that I know how long those questions right. will last. So then you switch on over. But, but nothing? Nothing. Okay. So I didn't hear a lot of drunk questions, you know, like uh, how much have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. um, mainly it's just how have you been drinking, trying to get your fest, see anything inside that juice? No. Um, why are you driving so late at 2 o'clock? I don't know. Where are you going? Going to Arbor uh, on the west side. Where are you, who are you going to see? Just trying to just talk to her. But, okay, uh, right there, those questions maybe took 40 seconds. 15 minutes? And you said five at the car. So then we got 10 of a lot of questions. Right. Okay. I mean, you tell me it wasn't there. I mean, well, obviously, then, I don't have any audio. Then, then, then that's what I'm saying. Roughly on a traffic stop, take about 20 minutes. It was the quickest traffic stop, about 15 minutes. That's your quickest traffic stop? No. Okay, you're a slowpoke. I'm not. I don't, I don't really get 1090 at all or anything like that, but I I take but, my time sometimes. But you didn't write her tickets. Didn't write her ticket. You didn't write her. Didn't write her. You didn't even put yourself out. Didn't put myself out. How up. could you take 15 minutes on that? just talking I must have been talking so that's it I, don't, I can't see her wanting to talk if she's crying and asking if you're gonna shoot her and all this I don't see her being real forthcoming with conversation whether my questions or whatnot that's it I'm... detectives now go back to the Ligon's case and start questioning his traffic stop routine it is an established fact that he did not run Liggins through the system and only checked her and the car on the surface, but this still took him 15 minutes. This is a very intricate yet very crucial detail. A standard traffic check would take about 15 to 20 minutes, but that involves a lot of steps like running toxicology screens and details of the person. Daniel did not do any of these, so it should have taken him way less time. He will now have to come up with an entire explanation of what could have happened in 15 minutes. He claims they were just talking, but this forces him to share more details, which he has not done yet. I mean, you don't seem, I mean, I don't know how you were out there, but just kind of talking with you. I mean, you seem real laid back and everything like that. I, I don't, I've never got the impression of just kind of an angry type cop. We know some, right. you know, that, uh, yeah, you might would ask, but I, I don't see that question coming up of, of you. Right. And you're not saying she was drunk or high or, I mean. I didn't think she was drunk or legal limit point oh eight and like I said I didn't I didn't make any threats to her. She she was just emotional because me the gun deal or she saw a cop and what she gun just, deal? She said, You got a gun so I was like, Calm yeah, down. Duh. Everybody is Yeah, and so I guess she brought that up and I was like, Calm down. When she asked about the you got a gun, what what point did she ask that? Uh she asked that right when we were searching the passage and when we were in the back of the car. So she brought twice. it up twice? Twice. She just says, you got a gun or what? Yeah, and it starts crying. I'm like, don't get emotional. It's okay. Did she ever say, you shouldn't do this? No. Or I can't do this? No. She just says, you got a gun. You got a gun. Are you going to shoot me? No, no. And I know. I don't think she ever said that. No, you said you said last time. You, I said, did okay. she? Did she? Well, did she? Maybe she said that. that. But then I was like, do you have any bad runs in with the cops? And she's like, no. That just doesn't fit. That's just weird. And that's what I, I mean. That's I'm kind of in there too. I don't know if I don't think she was drunk, but I know there's pills on board. I don't know. If, I don't know. So. What was it what, to the do, point? Do you carry a Glock? Oh, you I don't do. have it on. Yeah. I don't even pay attention. Said the, the one you got in the academy? Yes. Both detectives have strategized the interrogation really well. They both know each other's style and have perfect coordination. Anytime the confrontation needs to be made, Detective Rocky takes over. And when Daniel starts shutting off or gets nervous, Detective Davis takes the lead to calm him down. Okay, who, who all was home when you got home? Uh, my girlfriend, Carrie Hunt. You live with anybody else? No, no. Is she a placement? No, she's not. Uh, Carrie Hunt? Carrie Hunt. Does she work? Are we going to, if we call She does work. She, she works work uh, normal eight to five hours, Monday through Friday. Okay. 
Where does she work? At a uh, Crest and Oil Memorial in MacArthur area. Around there. Okay. Uh, we're getting those tie bats together. Don't call her. <laughs> okay. You created some more work. Fixing the go. I just talked to Carrie. Okay. She said she was asleep when you got home and you did not try to have sex and you did not have sex. She said you didn't. And I asked her, could you have been asleep and you had kind of wall no and she said no. She you did not try to have sex. As much as I don't want to evolve her, I tried to have sex with her and she was asleep. Carrie goes to sleep pretty early. I'm nine, ten at the late. Okay, the but it, she would know if you try. I'm a woman. I know. And, and my husband comes <laughs> home in the middle of the night, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? I've been asleep." You said you twirled around her vagina I did. and you put it in a little bit, and then she said, "I'm tired." No. I did. She would remember that to tell me. She, maybe. She you. said you did not try to have sex. <laughs> and it's more personal because it's Carrie, but I did try to have sex with Carrie. I did. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, because it just looks like I just caught you in a lie. And now I don't know I, what to believe. I'm telling you. I don't know what to believe. Okay. Because you tell me this, I go to verify it. She tells me the opposite. And now I'm, now I'm wondering what you're telling the truth about. Maybe because she's she doesn't know what the heck's going on. No, she doesn't. I didn't tell her. And I'm glad, but... The Texas calling her, any other officer asking her a question like that. I know. She may be scared. And I don't want to involve her, but she's involved that's because my you, girlfriend. That's like you need her involved for you. Right. But now she's given the story that you're not given. I'm, I'm telling you, I try to have sex with Carrie, my girlfriend. She and is going to remember like, your weenie twirling around her hoo ha. You remember that. I don't I'm, I'm sorry, I don't care how much of a sleeper you are. You remember because it pisses you off in the middle of the night and you go, Are you serious? Don't bother yeah. me with that. Uh, maybe you should call her and ask her if she's a deep sleeper. Because there's multiple times I've tried to do that. Multiple times we've had sex. Multiple times she has pushed Well, me you off. told me that you have sex every day and she says you did not have sex today. We didn't have sex today. No. We didn't. Well you said you have Every day. Mostly every day, yes. So if I call her back, is she going to tell me that you'll but have sex every not, day? We did not have sex, but recently, but, mm. mostly all every day, yeah. I, I, I'm a woman, and I know what it feels like to be woke up for sex, and I don't like that. And you remember it, and and I don't, you, I don't believe you. The biggest turning point of the interrogation comes when the detectives contact Daniel's girlfriend, Carrie Hunt, 25. Daniel is not expecting this and suddenly feels very exposed. He starts to sweat profusely. As you may remember, Carrie was mentioned before in the interrogation. Daniel had said that they tried to get intimate, but did not as she was tired. This does not match what Carrie said, so Daniel is now caught in a lie. I don't know, you're a dude. Does your wife get I pissed could, off if you try to wake her up in the middle of the she night? She had white, white thong on and, and a t-shirt. Um, okay, you talk to him. I'm going to go call her again. Because okay. right now, I don't believe it. Hey, the pants. You want me to bring them in? Yeah. In a plastic bag? Yeah. I mean, a brown paper sack. Okay, don't start yet. Wow. <laughs> and that's probably her messing or whatever. I don't She's like, what? And oh, I wish well, we were not going to involve her, Carrie. Well, we're not going to. Tell her you're gonna have to explain whatever the situation is. That's what happened. You got any questions of all this? <laughs> oh, you, I'm you getting attacked now. I'm just feeling. Oh my God, bless. I want DNA. I want everything. I want get it done. We're we're gonna put it to the front of the line, okay? Get it done. I can tell you. It usually takes a long time, but because of the situation, we will put it at the front of the line, okay? Yeah. I mean, 
usually on the stuff to do whatever we can. Here is shorts and a shirt. I don't know if the shirt will fit in a sec. Before I call Carrie. Yes. Shorts and a shirt. You tried to have sex with Carrie. I tried not to have somebody my else. girlfriend, yes. That was in my bed, yes. Do you ever cheat on her? No. So it's only Carrie right now. Carrie. Okay. All right, man. Detectives realize that they have successfully made Daniel anxious, so this is the perfect time to pressure him some more. Detective Davis has been empathetic so far, but after taking the testimony of Daniel's girlfriend as an opportunity to change her role, she will now act angrier, hence shedding the friendly persona she had maintained. This will make Daniel even more nervous, and seeing this, Detective Rocky will become more soft and empathetic, in the hope that Daniel will start to share more details with him. Until this investigation gets all completed, what's going on, we're going to put you on administrative leave with pay, okay? Sure. Just part of procedures, you know, and they got to do this until it gets all taken care of, yeah. okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this to sign that you're receiving it. And I'm yeah. going to give you a copy to take home. I want you to read it very carefully when you get home because okay. there's some details to other people forget to read. You know, such as you got to check in with me on every Tuesday morning before 9 o'clock. Okay. Call me at the station and just make sure I know who you are and where you're at. Yeah. There's some things we got to take from you. We are, I think there's firearms already in there. Yes, sir. And you're in the deal. Um, do you have your um, your shirt in here? We'll get your badge off that. Yeah. Is that the only badge you have? Yes, because the other badge is upstairs because it was uh, we got lost during our foot chase. So. Okay. The other one's upstairs. Upstairs where? Uh, with Susan, um, oh. Chief. Okay, assistant. so you haven't got a replacement yet? I haven't yet. You have not? Okay. okay. Well, we need to find out about that as well. So you just have the one on the desk and whatever. Let's go ahead and get that from you. Okay. We're going to need your radio too. We'll just kind of check it off as we go here. Thank you. Thank you, so we got the badge and the radio, you know, that radio there. And Lieutenant Gregory's going to take you home too, get you right home. Are you still up on North May? Yes. Okay, we've got the badge. And then do you have your commission card and entry card with you? I do. Okay. And this, the seal missing is from from the last yes. foot chase thing, yes, right? Sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So we have the entry card and we have the clean card. Clean card, card, entry card. Okay. Is that your entry oh, card? This, is this, I'm sorry. What do you yeah. have here? Okay. Is that all? The uh, clean card is commission okay. card. We'll and take all that. It's okay. entry card. We got all that. And here, um, do you have anything else besides your firearm? Do you have a, um, a shotgun? I do have a shotgun. Is it in your vehicle? It's at home. It's at home, okay. Yeah. I'll get that. He'll grab that okay. when he goes with you and grab that. Um, he'll probably grab your radio charger as well. Okay. And any spare batteries you have there. You don't have a taser. I don't have a taser. Nothing like that. No, um, no. We have your, I have your keys to your car. Do you have any um, keys to the station or anything like that? No, no. Okay. All right. And that's going to be it. Okay, I'm gonna let you sign this that you're receiving it, okay? And I'm gonna give you your own copy, okay? So you can read it. Now, you can't wear your uniform, of course, we have your, all your badge and gun, you can't work extra jobs, can't drive city vehicles. And then, you know, those guys will be in touch with you for any further follow up with that, okay. you know? And if you, be sure to read this, like I said, because you know, if you go out of town, you got to call and let us know no, first. Okay. If you go, um, if you're going to go out of state, you need to get permission from us. Okay. Type of deal, but read it very carefully. Okay. That's your copy right there. And I'm going to witness it. Okay. I think that's it, Arthur. Okay. And you'll take. Um, let me. I'll take the. Um, Unknown to Daniel at the time, this will be the last time he wears his uniform. After the interrogation, Daniel was placed on indefinite paid leave by the administration and given leave without charges at the time. Once the case was out in the open, a dozen more informants came forward with the same allegations. Two months later, on August 21st, 2014, he was arrested for 16 counts of sexual abuse. Later, it increased to a total of 36 different charges. On December 10th, 2015, Daniel Holtzclaw received 18 guilty verdicts and 18 individual prison terms, which left him with a prison sentence of 263 years, guaranteeing that Holtzclaw would die in prison. This is not the first atrocity committed against the African American community, especially where a police officer is involved. It would be a gross misinterpretation if we claim that this assault had nothing to do with race. Detectives suspect that the reason that Daniel Holtzclaw chose black women is not a matter of preference, rather it is a matter of convenience. It is a community that is especially underserved in terms of justice and protection, despite a roaring movement like Black Lives Matter already in place since 2013. 
It started when the dreadful shooting of a black teenager, Trayvon Martin, took place. However, the case of the victims of Daniel Holtzclaw brings out the grotesque mixture of rape culture and ignorance of the rights of the black community. The victims that came before Janie Liggins all confessed that they did not report the crime until much later because being a black female put them at a disadvantage in front of Daniel. Do you believe that Daniel's choice of victim was based on the perfect victim? Did the fact that he could get away with brutalizing the women of a certain community give him more confidence to get away with his crimes? Are 263 years in a prison enough to keep a whole community safe? What are your thoughts on this? Comment down below. If you have any such cases that you want us to cover, add them to the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such content. We hope to see you in the next video on our channel.